Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we're gonna to be making mango soda. We're gonna be doing a naturally fermented mango soda, and we're gonna be using our ginger bug that we made recently. I'll go ahead and link to that video. I think it's on this side. Well, I'll link to that video so you can check that one out if you're interested, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm using a recipe from Fearless Eating. And her recipe calls for uh, two quarts of filtered water, four to five organic mangoes, three to three quarters of a cup of organic sugar, and a half of a cup of ginger bug. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. I'm definitely gonna go on the lower side of those mangoes. We're gonna go probably three to four mangoes per jar, and we're gonna make a double batch of it because I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy this. So I wanna make sure I have enough and I have a lot of mangoes that I need to go through. So we're gonna get started. We're just gonna go ahead and peel all of these. And I'm the, basically I'm going to, uh, we're gonna puree these and I'm going to measure them and kind of get roughly about a quarter of it is gonna be the, uh, the mangoes and then whatever's left over, uh, we just probably won't put in the jar. So now that we have all of these cut, uh, peeled, we're gonna cut them up and buzz them up in the food processor. Okay, so that is all the mangoes pureed. Yeah, it's probably about 10 cups, maybe a little less. Nine and a half, nine to 10 cups of puree in total. A gallon of water, which I can already see we do not have room for. We'll go with a bigger pot here. There we go. Okay, so I did a gallon and like a little bit extra. Okay, so now what we need to do is add in the sugar. And according to this recipe, she said that she used three quarters of a cup, which she felt was perfect per batch. So we're doing a double batch and a double batch without quite as many mangoes in it. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same amount of sugar. So we're gonna put a, quart, um, a cup and a half of sugar in here, and then we're gonna bring it up to a boil and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. While we have that cooking over there, I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know, in case you're kind of new to fermentation or you're new to any kind of you know, thing like this with, and it seems like it has so much sugar, but it's supposed to be kind of healthy for you. And basically the sugar is just the fuel for the, the bacteria and all the things in it that we're trying to get to come, come alive and multiply and things like that. The sugar is what it feeds off of. And then those bacteria will be much stronger and much uh, more readily able to be populating your guts basically. And so if you don't feed them, they're not gonna multiply and they're not gonna uh, be as healthy and robust as you want them to be in order to help to go within your gut and do what it needs to do within your gut. So the fuel, the sugar, there will be some left, but not anywhere near as much as what we're putting in there. A lot of it is gonna be fermented out and it's gonna be just, like I said, just fuel for the bacteria. All right, so we are at a boil. So now what we're gonna do is it says to reduce the heat immediately and simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's gonna probably take uh, several hours for this to cool off. It's the next day and the mango puree thing has been able to cool off completely. You don't have to wait as long as I'm waiting but you just need to wait until it has cooled off completely. It's between room temperature and body temperature, kind of. And so that's where we're at. And what we have here is just a pot with a, um, a mesh strainer, and we're gonna put some muslin cloth over the top of it. You can also use like cheesecloth or anything like that, but this is just kind of useful what I have, so this is what I'm gonna use. You could probably use a coffee filter, all different sorts of things. 
So we're just gonna strain it out. So we're gonna strain this through the mesh and then we'll go ahead and use the, uh, the muslin cloth. I think there's just too much of the really fine pieces and it's just clogging up the cloth. Well, that is straining off. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dump this into here through this second finer mesh strain and strainer and hopefully we can get it to run through this muslin cloth as well. If not, we'll just go with the strainer. Not a huge deal. So if you have the patience to try and strain out all of these fine little mango particles, then make a puree out of it because I do think that you're gonna get more bang for your buck, more return on the, the mango eatiness. But it's a little challenging to get it strained out, so just bear that in mind. So I'm pretty sure that I have enough of the liquid, the mango juice, to be able to make a third jar, and I'm gonna do that later. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and move forward with this part of it, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do next here. <clears throat> so I have my ginger bug, and like I said earlier, I went ahead and I fed this last night, so it should be nice and active. I, well, it is nice and active. I popped it, it just a little bit ago. So we want a half of a cup per jar. So I have my my glass measuring cup, and I have it's like a nylon, I think, kind of a strainer. It's a, like a plastic kind of one. It's not metal, and then a plastic measuring spoon. So all we're gonna do with this is we're gonna pour off some of this ginger bug. This is actually the first time I've even used a ginger bug. So I'm not an expert, but hopefully we'll be able to figure this out. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna put a half a cup in each jar. So we have the liquid all ready here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on top of it uh, some type of an airlock system. You wanna make sure that you're depriving it of the oxygen. From my understanding, if you allow it to breathe and if you put something like mesh on top of it, it's gonna turn more vinegary. But this way, it won't. So, you can use an airlock. You can also just use a regular mason jar top, a mason jar lid or one of those plastic lids and just make sure that you come through and you burp it several times a day. I just like these simply because I don't have to burp them. I can just leave them be, just make sure to check them for any kind of mold, which shouldn't form. I don't have it, haven't had an issue with that. So that's all we're gonna do in this step. I'm gonna let the rest of this just kind of slowly filter out. And we're gonna put this in a cool place, like a warm temperature kind of place, a little bit cooler. And then, um, Warm place, kind of cooler. <laughs> Sorry, it's really late. I'm talking really quietly because my son's sleeping in the next room. Um, so, anyways, basically, what we're going to do with this is we're going to put it inside of some kind of a dish that will collect any anything that might spill out, and we're going to put this in a dark place that's kind of a little bit cooler, room temperature, maybe like 70 degrees, something like that. And we're just going to let it go for a little while and I'll bring you back and show you uh, basically just the next step. It's been six days since we let our ginger bug infused mango soda pop to ferment. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the next step. And we should have done this several days ago, but life is life and I didn't do it. So we're going to go ahead and strain it off now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take it, we're going to pour it into a bottle and I'm going to pour it up to roughly the start of the neck here. I'm gonna strain it one last time through a, a, a nylon strainer. You don't want to use any metal because this is fermented. So I'm just gonna catch anything that it, the other strainer might have missed. And so we're just gonna pour all of this off. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to the next one. This one I did the next day because I had to recharge the ginger bug. So I had to wait a day for this one because uh, I didn't have enough. And so this one is gonna be kind of a bit of a, a test run, I guess you could say. And so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it separate just so that we can see if, you know, one less day is much of a taste difference. 
So since I want to be able to tell which one is which, I'm going to go ahead and just put a rubber band around each of the three bottles that are one day less fermenting. So I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put it in our bottles or in our box here. If you like to do any kind of fermenting with uh, fermented drinks and things like that, totally you should pick up these. This, this is just like an espresso bottle box and it comes with all of these little dividers inside. I pick them up for free at Cash and Carry or Smart Food Service, whatever they call it these days. And they just work fantastic. If there's any kind of an explosion, it'll generally keep it from spreading to the other ones. And it just helps to block out the light. Like all you have to do is just cover it with a towel if you need to block out the light. And that's about all there is to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to ferment for a couple of days. So this recipe is definitely a winner, at least so far. So I'm gonna bring you back in a couple of days and tell you how this is once it's actually carbonated. It's been roughly about a week since we bottled up our mango fermented ginger bug soda. And so now we're ready to actually open these and try them. There's three different ones here. Now this is the one that fermented one day less and I put this in the fridge in about four days. I think it was like three and a half, four days. And this was the other one that had fermented a day longer. Same thing, put it in the same fridge at the same day. Uh, I had planned on filming this, but then I got busy and distracted and never ended up getting back to it. So it has been a pretty much a week. And so I have this one that has not gone in the fridge at all. So we're gonna be able to have a little bit of a comparison here. Uh, the refrigerated ones naturally are just going to bubble a little bit less than non-refrigerated ones. Something about the refrigeration process just kind of it harnesses some of the, the bubbliness. And you can definitely see here the difference. I mean, um, if we had strained this through like a muslin cloth and actually had the patience to do it, we wouldn't have had nearly as much sediment in here, but you can, I mean, you can see the sediment that's here. I'm being very careful. <laughs> and then this one has almost no sediment at all. And this one is, you know, this one gets this like Goldilocks. This one has some. So we're gonna start with the one that I think is gonna have the least reaction to it. So uh, this one was fermented one day less. So this one was fermented one day less than the rest, the original fermentation. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, I'm nervous. Okay, so we got some bubbles here. Nothing crazy. Okay, let's give it a try. got some fizz to it. Mm. That's really, really good. Oh my gosh. Oh, my husband's gonna love that one. Okay. So this is the one that was, for, same thing as this, just fermented one day longer. kind of see, I don't know if you can, but it's pretty bubbly. You want to try it? That's the mango one. No. No. <laughs> see, I told you he'd love it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try this one that has fermented for a full week. It might even be eight days, I'm not exactly sure. But it's definitely, it hasn't been refrigerated, so it should have a little bit more fizz to it. So let's get on it. I'm nervous about this one because uh, when you don't, from, like I said earlier, when you don't refrigerate it, it just, it has, tends to have more of a reaction. I'm not saying it necessarily will, but if we had added sugar to this right after we, when we were bottling it, it would have had probably a bit more fizz to it. But I was a little nervous the first time. I've never made an actual ginger bug soda. So it's being a little bit, So you can see, it went nuts. <laughs> so we're gonna have to slowly just kind of wait for that to 
let the air out or let the the gas out so finally got the lid off the carbonation has gone so we're gonna go ahead and give this one a taste test it's been fermenting a week longer well this one has a lot of um, sediments so we're gonna go ahead and filter some of that out so we're gonna give this one a nice little taste test I think that I like this one better, but my husband would like the other ones better. Okay, this one is a little bit less sweet. It's been fermented longer, so it, does, it's, it has, the bacteria has eaten a lot of the, the sweetness out of it. It's still very sweet, but if you like things very, very sweet, you're probably gonna wanna go on the, the less side of the fermentation time. And for me, I like things to be less sweet, so I'm gonna enjoy the longer fermentation time. And this was about seven to eight days, I'm not sure the exact number, but about seven or eight days. And then the other ones, those ones were, I wanna say four days, three to three and a half to four days, something like that. So kind of give you a bit of a time frame as to how long you wanna let these things ferment for. It definitely makes a big difference and you also want to make sure that you're being very careful when you're using these glass flip top bottles. Oftentimes people will use the plastic bottle that will you'll ferment right alongside of it. And so that one has the forgiving sides to it and you can squeeze it and you can kind of tell when the fermentation or when it, the carbonation has built up enough because it's really solid. I just didn't have a plastic bottle at the time, but I did save one so that the next time we do one of these recipes, I'll be able to show you what I'm talking about with that. So this is how I made the mango gingerbug fermented soda. And it is definitely something that you want to go ahead and add to the list of things that you want to try because this thing is amazing and it is delicious. And you saw everything that went into it. It's a pretty simple process. So I hope that you give it a try. And if you have any other ideas on different flavors of fermented gingerbug sodas, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I would love to hear some different ideas for that. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye.